hey guys uh, welcome back uh, uh, i had taken a short break for about a week after that uh, hectic uh, playlist related to john estimation so i want to continue uh, from one of the playlist which i had uh, left in between okay that is uh, the series uh, 3x um, that is that was related to ftm concepts okay so this is the one actually uh, you know if i go back to my channel uh, you know i had covered around 111 videos till now uh, so i thought i can take a break um, so in, in the playlist i have covered chan estimation uh, this was the one which i was mentioning uh, it was a tick then related to fixed point this is also completed this is also completed if there are any more information that needs to be added i will know i will add uh, uh, in the future as and when required but as of now these are like completed even papr is completed and uh, i want to continue this wavedm concepts okay um, apart from that uh, there is one more series uh, which is related to equalization okay i will change this uh, name to equalization but uh, right now it is in mimo 4g 5g wavedm uh, this is also pretty much interesting uh, then uh, local oscillator, LO leakage, uh, this one is uh, completed as of now. So let me go to this uh, series uh, 3x, okay. So here um, I was mentioning uh, why did we move to uh, 4G and uh, with that what were the disadvantages, mainly ISI was the one. To overcome ISI, what was the strategy used that is mentioned over here and there was a design approach number one in order to overcome that ISI or to overcome that ISI whatever the strategy we considered mm, for that one of the design approach is uh, uh, mentioned over here and then later on i moved to the design approach number two which is basically ofdm so that's how you know uh, um, that's how i was trying to bring the concept of ofdm and uh, to implement ofdm what are the required blocks i was mentioning and even you know uh, once uh, the ofdm design is considered basically in this series the ofdm design is considered uh, and, and I was trying to cover what all uh, signal processing blocks that are required to implement that, okay? So, as uh, you might be already knowing, one of the important blocks that is required is uh, IFFT or IFFT. Uh, so, that is considered. But apart from that, uh, uh, you know, to take care of uh, uh, other things, okay? Like uh, uh, null subcarriers on the bandwidth edge and even um, choosing the right FFT and all. Uh, so, we had to include uh, some more... Uh, uh, you know signal processing block that is also mentioned so finally we have arrived at uh, some of the blocks but there are still more blocks uh, which are required uh, to be implemented uh, that is exactly what we will see in this video i will take up uh, uh, the next block which is required okay so for that uh, right now i will move to the uh, ppt so So in this uh, video, uh, uh, we will talk about uh, the block which is called as a CP uh, addition, CP addition block at the transmitter side, but uh, CP removal will be at the receiver side. So what is this CP? CP is nothing but a, a cyclic prefix. So let us try to see what is this, uh, okay. So before that, I want to take you through the various uh, blocks, okay, used here. I want to rub some of the things. So, uh, uh, we had seen, you know, we need signal, uh, serial to parallel converter and then, you know, we are going to do zero padding uh, to take care of the um, edges of carriers and uh, then finally we are performing IFFT, uh, sorry, um, finally we are going to perform uh, IFFT, uh, that should be true to the power of N uh, size IFFT and then parallel to serial converter and then uh, you know finally we need this frequency shift uh, in, to ensure that uh, the spectrum okay the spectrum will be uh, centered around the dc frequency right after that uh, that should be given to dac and uh, and we had seen what's going to happen uh, further right in in our earlier videos so these many blocks uh, we had arrived at these many blocks we had seen how uh, we had come up uh, in designing these blocks okay so the first and uh, foremost thing is 
to reduce the ISI. Okay, I have taken the example of 10 megawatts. Basically, in 4G, we wanted to go for higher bandwidth. We uh, considered you know 10 megawatts uh, for this. You know, the simple duration okay uh, is 0.1 microseconds. So if we start the stacking 0.1 microseconds, symbol one, symbol two, symbol three like that, uh, you know. Let's say symbol 20, each symbol will occupy 0.1 microsecond. That's what is mentioned, right? Now, I was mentioning there is a delay spread in the in the multipath, right? And this delay spread is around 2 microseconds. Let's say if, if I consider like that, then the LR path, let's say last path, uh, in from the last path, the first symbol, okay, let's say this is the first symbol that will reach in the LR path after 2 microseconds okay but this this will be interfering with uh, the 20th symbol in the first path that's where you know we mentioned that all these 20 symbols are having having interference so this is a severe uh, ISI so this is what we need to eliminate so to eliminate this we have seen that uh, we can you know reduce or we can divide the wide band into sub bands where we call it as sub carriers and each subcarrier can have let's say 100 kilowatts then uh, our uh, you know the symbol duration would become around 10 microseconds in this case we have seen that uh, in this same 20 microseconds we have symbol 1 then we have symbol 2 uh, and in the LR path symbol 1 is given by this symbol 2 is given by this so if you clearly see only for a duration of 2 microseconds uh, uh, you know there is a interference from uh, yes, uh, for, for the second symbol, there is interference from the first symbol. Only a, now, rather than you know 20 symbols having the interference, now the interference is restricted to only one symbol. So you can say like that. So we want to even eliminate this. That was our, uh, 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 I mean, that is our intention right now, uh, because. Even this will create a, a lot of problems, right? Uh, you, you know, you will have some kind of distortion or intercarrier. Uh, um, sorry, which is uh, we might lose orthogonality. Uh, so orthogonality between the subcarriers, which is nothing but intercarrier interference. Um, so there could be problems, and and in order to overcome those problems, uh, the receiver might become complex to to. Uh, uh, eliminate those distortion or to avoid such kind of uh, uh, for intercarrier interference. In spite of that, the simple approach is, uh, you know, you place something which is not very much required. Okay, so maybe you know one of the approach is okay. Let me write the uh, picture over here. So in the first path, I had sent x1 first symbol and then uh, x2 the second symbol. Uh, but in the health path uh, due to some delay you know, of two microseconds so i will be receiving something like this so definitely you know uh, this much uh, delay two microsecond worth which is equal to actually uh, your delay spread that much is uh, uh, having interference right because this is still x1 this is x2 so uh, in, in the first part so when x2 is received at the same time in the lf path x1 is also received so there is an uh, there is an interference between these two to eliminate this the approach which is considered is you take the okay cycling prefix right so what does it say you take the last uh, um, you know last few samples that uh, would be decided by this tau d okay two microsecond worth of samples or you know to overcome this um, um, you know interference how much is required minimum i would say um, two microseconds okay which is a uh, delay spread uh, right it could be three microseconds also which is more better but let's say two microsecond is required uh, that is the minimum so I will place uh, two two milli uh, two microsecond worth of cyclic prefix which is uh, uh, present. Uh, okay, two microseconds worth of samples which are present at the end of uh, this uh, OFDM symbol X1 mm, that should be placed in the beginning. Okay, so now how does my uh, symbol look like? So this is actually you know X1. Now 
I have cyclic prefix added over here. <laughs> so next, I have x2 uh, cyclic prefix for uh, x2 and then uh, x2 symbol is actually there. Okay, I will say 1 and 2. Now you know, this is let's say first path and then now let's say the, the, the last path, eleventh path and then uh, even though we have you know the delay okay let's say delay here would be something like this uh, then um, this much is overlapped but this is actually you know uh, exactly overlapping with this cycle prefix and this cycle prefix is something uh, which i was mentioning uh, it should uh, not be uh, required right because this is in way corrupted now so this we can eliminate at the receiver this portion these many number of uh, samples we can eliminate and uh, take only the remaining portion and uh, proceed for proceed for, for further processing by that way you know your uh, isi is completely eliminated correct so here from 20 symbols we have brought to a very uh, minor uh, or less severe intersymbol interference uh, which is you know very a small uh, very small portion of, uh, of uh, uh, samples were affected but uh, with the cyclic prefix con concept even we have eliminated uh, the isi completely okay so i hope uh, this uh, concept is uh, clear uh, to you guys uh, so if uh, this is actually in fact asked in many interview questions like why say cyclic prefix is added in OFTM system so one of the advantage one of the advantages is that um, it is to eliminate uh, the inter symbol interference uh, between the OFTM symbols so that is first point then uh, basically by eliminating the inter symbol interference uh, it's like it becomes more robustness to multipath right but what is the disadvantage so disadvantage is that as you can clearly see you know um, so in this 20 microseconds okay so in this 20 microseconds we were able to transmit two symbols but now uh, we need this extra two microseconds right now to transmit uh, the two symbols okay uh, here let's say uh, here in order to transmit two symbols this two microseconds plus 10 2 plus 10 so total we need 24 microseconds we lost actually uh, two microseconds worth of uh, uh, information we are losing it right because we are adding it uh, uh, because we know that that would be corrupted uh, and and in the receiver we are just removing it we are not transmitting any uh, information there so your data rate is coming down right so that is the main disadvantage uh, the data rate uh, is reduced so there is that will uh, cycle to six will um, present as a overhead so where does when do we add the cycle prefix okay because we have mentioned so many blocks here right and uh, this cycle prefix uh, is added in the time domain and uh, that should happen after our IFFT block. So once parallel to serial conversion is done, and then you know, uh, even this is required to, uh, to shift your um, spectrum to the DC frequency. You know, at this point, you can add. Uh, we, we would be adding this CP addition. Okay. So. I hope uh, you got the concept. Uh, so one of the design concepts is to even come up with this cyclic prefix length, right? So right now I, I am telling uh, we, we have we have seen one is advantages and another one is disadvantage. So it affects the data rate, right? So if you go for uh, CP length higher, then your data rate uh, reduces a lot because this is overhead, correct? So your CP length has to be uh, as small as possible but at the same time it should ensure that the advantages are taken care which means that it should remove the isi completely so that is one of the design constraint so how to design the uh, cp length so for that reason uh, you know uh, in this video i just mentioned that uh, we can go for the minimum value which is two microseconds that will ensure that to both the uh, uh, 
criteria are met like taking care of advantages and also it is not going to bring too much disadvantage uh, to the system so um, i hope uh, the things are clear uh, like that uh, 